I'm Paul Beckwith. Can I have a drum roll, please? We basically need Operation Warp Speed for the climate. So, first of all, we need a good acronym for that. So, Operation Warp Speed is OWS. So, how about cows? We need cows. Climate Operation Warp Speed. And uh, we, we can't rest until the cows come home. Or rather, um, the cows, we need cows for the home, right? We need climate operation warp speed for the earth. So I'm going to talk about a bit more about how we need actually big government to um, enact this climate operation warp speed. And then I'm going to talk about one of the huge tipping points that we're rapidly approaching. And uh, in a subsequent video or two, I'll go into the details of the peer-reviewed paper. So basically, that is that the terrestrial, uh, car our terrestrial, so our on-land carbon sink is failing and likely will cross over from being a sink to a source within 20-odd uh, years. And this is extremely serious, and it's because of the nature of photosynthesis versus respiration of plants. And I'll explain the details um, in subsequent videos from the paper, but I'm gonna give you an overview of that now. So first of all, big government actually worked for the COVID vaccine push. The average time to develop a new vaccine is 10 years. But the White House and Congress in the US, they poured $18 billion into it. Basically, they put in multi-billion dollar pre-orders for vaccines, and they worked on the distribution challenge, um, the logistics of the distribution challenge. And it's not just in the US. I mean, money around the world was poured into it. And here we have a year, you know, a year after coronavirus started, we have multiple vaccines in numerous countries and they're being distributed to people now. There was on this in, in, you know, as far as the science of the vaccines was concerned, we were prepared somewhat in, in terms of our DNA uh, technologies to create new vaccines, but we were also very lucky. But were we really lucky? I mean, lucky if we had only one one of them that worked, but multiple vaccines have been developed around the world and multiple ones seem to work. So this is due to global cooperation. It's the fastest vaccine mobilization in history. So what lesson can we learn from this? When the world is facing a uh, world-threatening crisis, there is no substitute for government leadership at some level. You know, with, this is good news. I mean, if a comet or asteroid heads our way, and we know it's going to hit in about 10 years and wipe out Earth, then I'm sure governments can get together to address that problem. Well, we're facing, we have an existential crisis right now, ongoing from climate disruption, you know, abrupt climate change. And yet, um, you know, we're, governments are missing in action. So, you know, what gives with that? Like I said, we need cows, climate, operation, warp speed. So there's all kinds of tipping points in the Earth system. In the next video or two, I'll be talking about the temperature tipping point for the terrestrial biosphere, which I've already mentioned. Um, but there's also ocean tipping points, and I'll talk about those as well. And I'll talk about specific tipping point on land, that of the Amazon rainforest. So when you want to look at tipping points for the land, we define the tipping point as when the all the plants on the surface of the land basically, you know, they're absorbing carbon now. They're, they're a sink for carbon from the atmosphere. In fact, they absorb about 30% of the anthropogenic carbon emissions now, which is 2.6% petagrams of carbon per year. Um, there's various types of plants, C3, C4, and CAMs. Most plants are C3. Some plants, you know, if you look at uh, grasses, they're C4. Uh, corn is C4. It's like a, a grass. And then CAMs is things like, uh, you know, pineapples and that. They retain the water a lot better. But 
most plants are C3. So we need to look at global photosynthesis and global respiration. Now respiration is always the case for animals. You know, plants uh, perform photosynthesis during the day when the sun is out, but then they turn to respiration at night. As temperature increases, photosynthesis is actually decreasing now. We pass the maximum uh, temp we pass the temperature at which photosynthesis was a maximum in the last decade. So now photosynthesis drops as temperature increases, but plant respiration reaches a temperature peak, much, much higher temperature. So it is still rising rapidly, exponentially. So the net result is that as temperature increases on the land, and it's increasing on the land at much faster rates, almost double the rate than it is than the global average is increasing, the sink for the land reduces. And what this new study shows is that uh, within about 20 years, then we'll have a tipping point in the land. The emissions from the land will surpass that of the, um, the, the, um, the, the sink, the capture of carbon. If you look at the mean temperature of the warmest quarter of the year, so the warmest three months of a year, we've already passed the thermal maximum at that time of year in many parts, um, and that was passed during the, the, the past decade. So business as usual, with business as usual, the land sink for carbon will actually go in half as early as 2040. So that 30% of the anthropogenic carbon that carbon emissions that the land is sucking up now, that 2.6 petagrams of carbon per year will be reduced down to 15% of the emissions, um, even less because emissions are rapidly increasing. So that'll be down to about 1.3 petagrams of carbon per year. So the net result is that carbon in the atmosphere will skyrocket when the land is no longer a strong sink. So we're definitely running out of time. Now, to expand a little bit on this land tipping point, uh, before I you know, get into the actual paper next video, just think of you know, life, reactions in in animals and plants. What are they? Like all biological processes, these reactions are chemical reactions. So the metabolic processes of photosynthesis and respiration, um, those rates accelerate with warming. They reach a maximum rate and they decline thereafter. So carbon fluxes do not have the same temperature response, the, the sink fluxes, the photosynthesis fluxes, and the respiration fluxes. In fact, there's a sharp divergence in the ecosystem carbon balance as temperature increases. So photosynthesis actually peaked in the last decade, but respiration is still going up very fast. So Basically what this study did is it looked at the temperatures at which photosynthesis is a maximum. Um, it used a, a, a system called a carbon monitoring network that is the world's largest, it's called FluxNet. And basically um, the photosynthesis in plants and respiration, it has a temperature dependence. It also depends on the water availability and the sunlight. So this study actually teased out the effects from water and sunlight on photosynthesis to just get the temperature. And the same thing with respiration. And, uh, you know, so it looked at things like net ecosystem productivity, gross primary production, um, and things like that. And basically the temperature dependencies of chemical reactions are well described in chemistry by something called the Arrhenius function, the Ar Arrhenius equation, okay? Now, when you, can, when you apply that to biology, you get something like MMRT, which stands for macromolecular rate theory. 
So this describes how enzymes work as a function of temperature, for example, how microbes grow as a function of temperature, soil respiration and leaf respiration can be determined. Okay, so the net re result is that, um, and again, the tipping point of the terrestrial system, the carbon sink, the tipping point is when the, what is absorbed out of the atmosphere into all of the plants on the land surface no longer is greater than what is emitted from all of the plants on the land surface. That's a tipping point. And like I said, we, we could hit that in 20 years. So for C3 plants, which are most plants on land, the, the temperature for the TP, T sub P max, super, superscript max is the, the uh, it, that's the temperature at which photosynthesize is maximized. And for th C3 plants, it's 18 degrees Celsius. For C4 plants, it's 28 degrees Celsius. However, the respiration max, the TR max, for leaf respiration is 60 degrees Celsius. And for soil respiration, it's 70 degrees Celsius. So we've already passed this, the, this, the photosynthesis max. Okay, if you take the C3 to C4, the ratio of C3 plants on the earth to C4, and you scale that by the, um, cur the, the temperature maxes, and you can get an overall photosynthesis curve. And we've passed the peak already. So further rises in temperature cause a reduction of photosynthesis. However, we're nowhere near the maximum of respiration. So once we pass the peak for photosynthesis, then photosynthesis is declining exponentially per the Arrhenius equation for biology, the, the MMRT theory, whereas the respiration is still increasing with further temperature rises. So the disjoint between sink and source becomes greater and greater. Um, Basically, uh, we can talk about the inflection point of a curve. I don't know how much calculus you remember, or if you had it at all, but when you take the second derivative of a function, if the second derivative is zero, that's the inflection point of the curve. So before you reach that second derivative of zero, that second derivative is positive. It means the curve is concave up. Then you hit the inflection point where the second derivative is zero. So the, the rate of change of the slope is zero. And then um, you, as, you, as you pass, the second derivative is negative, meaning that the curve becomes concave down and you reach a maximum. So we've already passed that inflection point for photosynthesis. So the you know, further increases in temperature are slowing the, increased, the rate of increase of photosynthesis. We passed the top of the curve and now we're exponentially decreasing in terms of photosynthesis on land when temperature increases. Uh, whereas the respiration is still nowhere near the, the uh, inflection point because the curve occur bends over, the curve maximum is at 60 degrees for leaf respiration and 70 degrees for soil respiration. All these details will be you know, shown from the paper in my next video, but this is bad news. Uh, this means, uh, also this means that a lot of the planting well, a couple other things. Right now, during the three warmest months, um, the temperature exceeds the photosynthesis max temperature in, on about 10% of the land surface. Um, and as temperature rises, that will, that will cover 50, 30, 40, 50% of the land surface. In fact, most of the decrease in the sink capability of the earth is is uh, in sensitive areas like the Amazon rainforest, which I'll do a separate video on the Amazon alone on a separate paper, but also the, the taiga forests. So the Northern Boreal Forests of Canada and Russia. Um, we're losing, those are also, the, the sink capability of those, of those places is also decreasing. Okay, so the bottom line is that we have to be really smart when we when we want to use vegetation to absorb more and more carbon if we do it on the earth in regions that are going to see large temperature rises okay so in inside continents um 
or at high elevation regions, those sinks are going to be are going to collapse. We need this is why we need to pull out carbon from the oceans. Thanks for listening.